So what do you what, what do you think a return would be in the future for you for you to have financial freedom? What is the return you want to earn on your assets? Uh, forty thousand. Okay, forty thousand percent or forty thousand. What's the ROI? Okay, so here's an example. This is good. Thanks, Aaron, for participating. So if you have your long-term assets, do you mind just making up a number of what you wrote down? You don't need to tell me what you actually wrote down for this exercise. What's the number you wrote down, please? Long-term ad. Long-term assets, you said? Yeah, yes, long-term assets. Uh, I don't know, 200,000. Okay, so let me, let's reverse backwards. So let's, everyone remember, you take last year's income times 25, so everyone can do this, grab your calculator while you guys are sitting there, you guys are looking bored. I want you to teach this to your favorite realtor, okay? You take last year's adjusted gross income times 25. So if you made $100,000 last year, i this with you guys, times 25, that would be 2.5 million. If you guys got understand that, give me a thumbs up. Okay, cool. Now, what I want you guys to determine, Aaron, in this example, what is the return or ROI you want to make on those set assets? Go Braves, by the way. What is the return, Aaron, you want to make on those set assets, please? Just make up any number you feel comfortable with. Uh, I, I, 40,000. I don't know. I'm still trying to, I'm okay, still wrapping my head around the. Okay, let's do, let's do 5%. Everyone get it with that? So let's do this example, 5%, okay? So as real estate agents, you guys measure cap rates on rental properties, right? Um, let's, I'm going to pick uh, the guy that owned 15 rental properties that had his arms folded, that he has his hand on his hand like this right now. Yep, he sees me. What is the current cap rate, in your opinion, sir, in your market? You just stand up and yell. What's the current cap rate? Four or five percent. Okay, cool. Four or five percent. You guys want to write that down? Let's go with five percent. Five is an easier number. So, Aaron Payne, I'm still going to use you as an example. So, let's say last year you made $100,000 adjusted gross income. You're now going to times that by 25. That gives you two and a half million. I want everyone that's virtual to type this in the Zoom chat bar. Because when you write it in and reinforce, then you can teach it to someone else. Now, if you make two and a half million at five percent, that's one hundred and twenty-five thousand dollars annually. You guys all got that? So last week, is anyone a Keller Williams agent in your office? Raise your hand if you're a Keller Williams agent. Got no Keller Williams agents that I see. Oh, I, I got one with the red wall. Elena. All right, cool. I see that. So last week, I taught this class at a Keller Williams Market Center here in Utah. And I got to be honest, we didn't get past this part. I just talked about this for an hour because I can talk about all the hows. If that makes sense, you guys want to write this down? We could talk about all the hows, but we need to understand what do we want. So as real estate agents like yourself, we need to understand the current returns on our portfolios. Okay? So I'm going to do a quick exercise. What do you want in assets? And they're bringing out this sheet of paper for you guys to do you can write long-term goals, okay? What do you want in assets? Now, the next part is, what do you want your ROI to be? Return on investment. So the gentleman that said it was four and a half to 5%, sir, what year did you buy your first property, uh, please? It was 12 years ago. 12 years ago, awesome, 2009. And in your opinion, in, in, in Nashville, Tennessee, when did you hit the bottom of the real estate market? What year? Yeah, 2010. 2010. If you guys agree with 2010, raise your hand. Type in the Zoom chat bar. I want to see what you guys think. Okay, I only got a half the people raising. If you guys think that you hit the bottom of the market 2011, raise your hand. Got one, two people. Okay, cool. So in, some people said 2008. Okay, in Utah, we hit the bottom of our market in 2011. And we've been going up, uh, last year, we went up 28% in Utah. It's freaking crazy. We are the second highest appreciating state. Um, Idaho is number one. Tennessee was above the average because I looked this up before our presentation. So as real estate agents, has rents increased as much as your values? Give me, a, give me a thumbs up. Have rents increased as much as your values? They haven't. You guys agree? Rents are slowly going up more than values. So... If I built my portfolio again right now, knowing what I know now, here's what I'm going to do to analyze my portfolio. Number one, 
analyze the current value every November, okay? So of, of all the 87 rental properties that I own, I'm gonna give you guys a formula that you can share for yourself or you can share with your clients that you can determine if you should do a 1031 exchange. So, um, sir, with the blue shirt that owns more than 15 properties, I like you because you're smiling at me. What's your name? My name's Tucker. What was it again? I'm sorry. Tucker. Okay, cool. Tucker. Thank you. What do you. Got it. What do you think of the value is of one of your properties? We're going to use this as an example for all of you guys because when realtors want to take me to lunch, which I don't normally do, I go through this whole thing. So if I can help 40 of Chris's favorite realtors understand this, we're making awesome progress. What is the current value of one of your properties, please? 350,000. Awesome. Cool. That sounds like mine. 350,000. I typed this in the Zoom chat bar. Do you mind describing how many square feet is the property? They're all duplexes. So if they're about... 1900. Awesome. Cool. They're, they're duplexes. Are they two bedroom, one bath on each side? Yes. Okay. Do you get about $900 a month in rent plus or minus a hundred bucks? No, more. Okay. You get more. Awesome. Okay, cool. More than our market. How much a month do you get in rent on your each duplex? 1375. 1375. That's amazing. All right, cool. So now grab, grab your calculators, guys, or write this down on a piece of paper. I'm showing you the what while they're getting out these forms. I'm going to take 1375 times two, because there's two units, right? Times 12, and type in the Zoom chat bar, 1375 times two, because there's two units, times 12, 12 months. What is the total gross revenue there? You guys can type in the Zoom chat bar. Elena, I can tell you're a Keller Williams agent because you're diligent, awesome. Thanks everyone else for participating. Okay, $33,000, awesome. Now, we're gonna take $33,000 divided by the current value of the asset. If I remember correctly, he said 350,000, is that correct? Yes. Okay, yes. now 350,000. What is the return or the return on asset in this example? if he owned the property free and clear. So if you guys can take 33,000 divided by 350,000, what is the return? Good job, we got a lot of people in there, 9.4%. All right, fantastic. Now you've established a benchmark of your portfolio. So action item number one, for all of you guys that own rentals, I will evaluate every November my current value. I'm gonna tell you five things with this. Number one, the current value. Number two, the principal balance. I'd write this down because I literally have a PowerPoint and I changed my mind with what I'm sharing, okay? Number two, the principal balance. Number three, the gross rent, okay? So number one, the value. Number two, the principal balance. Number three, the gross rent. Number four, the interest rate on the debt, if there is any, okay? That's why I want to analyze my properties. Number three, the interest rate on my debt, if there is any. Number four, the depreciation that year if I sold the property and did not do a 1031 exchange. I'm going to say this one more time, okay? Number one, the va uh, let's see, Chris, if someone on your team is watching this virtually, do you mind them typing my notes in so the other people can get this, please? So, and if not, my team will do it. Linda, you can do it. Awesome. My team's watching this out. Okay, so number one, the current value. Number two, the principal balance. That means what you owe on your properties. Number three, the gross rents. Number four, the interest rate on the debt. Number five, the depreciation when we sell a .do a 1031 exchange. Okay, why is that important? I'm reevaluating my portfolio every year. Raise your hand if you've ever done a 1031 exchange. Raise your hand, 1031 exchange. Not one person has done a 1031 exchange. Is that correct? Virtually, if you've done a 1031 exchange, raise your hand or type in 1031 exchange. Wow, not no one. Okay, cool. Raise your hand if you know what a 1031 exchange is. This is really, really important. Uh, okay, we got half of you. All right. I've done about 15 1031 exchanges, okay? 
So I'm going to give you a short version. This is what you, I would do if I was in your market. Good. Amy Weistaz and Donna Goffaz. Cool. So a 1031 exchange, 1031 exchange is you buy a property, you hold on to it for a certain amount of time. Here's the three things that benefit you. One, values normally go up over time, right? You guys can type in the Zoom chat bar, since you hit the bottom of the real estate market, how much of your value has gone up? If you guys can type in the Zoom chat bar, if for those of you guys who are local, how much of your value has gone up? So since you hit the bottom of the market, in your, in your opinion, how much has the real estate values gone up in the last 12 years? I'm waiting for people to tell me because you guys know your market better than I do. Okay, number two. Number two, principal pay downs go down. Does that make sense? You guys agree? There's a principal pay down. Number two. Number three, you have what's called depreciation. So I'm going to show you guys a quick calculator that you don't need to be a CPA to do this. Clint Haynes, you ready? This is going to be fun. So let's say you buy a new property for $350,000. If you guys can write this down, $350,000. And let's pretend the land value is $50,000. Land value when you buy real estate does not depreciate on your tax returns, okay? So therefore, $300,000, you would depreciate over 27 and a half years. So grab a calculator, Danny Sullivan, you look really focused. I like that. Okay. So we're going to take $300,000 divided by 27.5. That gives you a dollar figure. Can you guys type in the Zoom chat bar for all of you guys that are doing this with your calculator? $300,000 divided by 27 and a half. What is the number? I'd like everyone to participate in the Zoom chat bar and all of you guys there in Chris's office to type this number in also. Okay. Like high level planning does as real estate agents. Awesome. We have 10,909. I would agree. So let's pretend in 10 years. So in 2031, of the realtors, how many of you guys say, we don't want to buy anything because we're at the peak of the market? Raise your hand. If you have a client say that once a week, raise your hand high. We don't want to buy anything. We're at the peak of the market. Okay, I get that all the time, right? Good job, Harrison. Thanks for sharing that. So if everyone's saying, we don't want to buy anything, we're at the peak of the market, here's what we need to take into consideration. Dollar cost averaging, right? So if real estate appreciates, but you got Chris, where you at, Chris? Where's Chris at? Where? Chris, he's not great. I'm over here. Chris, in your opinion. All right, there we go. How much has real estate gone up since you've owned it, in your opinion? Uh, including the bottom, including the market going down and the market going up. Uh, some properties have at least doubled, some have tripled in value in the last 10 years. Okay, so is it fair to say that the values have gone up 10% a year? Uh, yes, for sure. Okay, cool. So here's what I'm going to have you guys do. As mortgage, as real estate professionals, grab your calculator. So here's action item number one. Ready, Chris? Ready, Clint? Ready for all your loan officers? Brian Wenzel, you're going to type this in for me, please, because you're here. What I'm going to do is when I do mortgage planning with real estate agents, not with regular clients, right? So if I'm meeting with you as your real mortgage planner to help you with your portfolio, I'm going to make some assumptions. Brian, if the values go up 10% a year based on a $350,000 value, in 2031, what will the future value be? So, I'm gonna, so one of my team members is going to type this in for you. The guy with the hat on backwards that looks like Chris's hunting buddy. I'm going to go over this with you, Kay. He's looking at me right now like that, Kay. So here's what we do. Take a current value of 350000 Grab your calculator. You can times it by 10, and you can manually add it each time. And what you'll notice is the balance starts compounding on top of each other. Or you can use a financial calculator. You type in a couple, you can type in a couple buttons and that will show you the future value. So here's the first example, Brian Wenzel. Cool. Brian Wenzel said, he works on my mortgage team. He's my team lead, kind of like Chris has Grant. In 10 years, if you buy a property for $350,000 today and it continues to appreciate 10% a year in the next 10 years, it's worth $907,809, $907,000. That's a ton. You guys think that's a ton? Give a round of applause. 
That's a ton. That's a ton of money, right? That's a ton. All right. Here's where it gets sick. Sick is an amazing. Not like I got COVID sick. Okay. So here's where it gets sick. Brian, let's do a mortgage example real quick. So let's say you're working with preferred rate in the Mount Julep, Julep office and you buy a property for $350,000 and you put 20% down. So grab your guys' calculators as real estate agents. This will make you the difference versus your competition in our market. The realtors that know how to do this with their clients do not get shopped on rates and fees, right? They're not asking for a compression on their commission because you can walk along with your clients on how to do this, okay? So Brian, why don't you show me if we have a 4% interest rate? Chris, what's an interest rate on investment property in your market? Uh, about 20% down. About, around 4%. Okay, let's cool. Let's do 4%. Okay, so Brian Wenzel, let's do a $280,000 principal balance. If you guys know how to do this, Clint, I'd like you to do this too. You just got a drink of water. So you have to have a $280,000 principal balance at 4% on a 30-year amortized loan. Let's pretend you don't refinance. In 10 years, what will be your mortgage balance? So Brian Wenzel. Now, for all of you guys that are realtors watching this virtually, if you know how to do this, type it in the chat bar. If you don't know how to do this, this is action item number two I want you guys to take away from this class, okay? Yeah. So Brian Wenzel, one more time. Okay, cool. So Brian, what he did is he took $350,000 purchase price, put 20% down, so that means you finance $280,000. So my friend with the backwards hat that looks like Chris's hunting buddy, the balance in 2031, your balance will be 220595 You guys want to write that down? 220595 Now, we're going to take the depreciation part. If you guys remember, grab your calculators again. The reason why I like you guys to participate is this is way more engaging than a CE class, in my opinion. I've sat through 20 years of CE classes in my life, okay? So... The depreciation, here's what will make you guys, you guys can start teaching your classes to your clients. So here's an idea that I would do. Once a quarter, I would teach a introductory real estate investing course. If you own one more property than your clients, you're an expert. Would you guys agree with that? Raise your hand, yes. If you own one rental property and your clients own none, you are a bigger expert than they are, okay? And I'm not, I'm not joking. You guys are literally more of an expert, okay? So here's what I'd like you to do for a second. This is kind of fun, Chris. I want you to identify first quarter. So is the sheet of paper have my little face on it, Chris? My little caricature? Yes. All right, you guys see that? I just love my team. Create, they do awesome design. Okay, so action item number one is quarter one. You want to teach a class with 10 of your favorite clients on how to buy real, a rental property, okay? So you guys see that, Chris, you see that? So action item number one, you guys, by the end of the first quarter, so I gave you guys a lot of time, a class with 10 of your favorite clients on how to, how to buy your first rental property. You only want 10 people because you wanna be able to teach it in front of a group that you feel comfortable with. Does that make sense? There's a realtor to my left with the green jacket. Are you committed to do that, ma'am? Front row, green jacket. Um, Big no. thumbs up. I'm <laughs> All right, cool. I love it. I love it. Dude, I love it. All right. Chris, Chris, can someone on your team help her teach her first class in the first quarter? Absolutely. Yeah, okay. I would. I'll do it. Okay, here's your, what's your, ma'am, with the green jacket? What's your name, please? Suzanne. Elaine? Suzanne. Like Shazam. Shazam. All right. Sorry. <laughs> Shazam. All right. Boom. Shazam. All right. So, Chris, here's a commitment. Shazam. I'm going to call you Shazam now. All right. So, like, you Shazammed all over you. All right. So, so what you're going to do by first quarter is you're going to teach your goal is to get 10 people to show up to a class. Is that fine? Yeah. So, here's how I would approach it. I would write this script down. Okay, guys? So, here's what I would do. I call your favorite clients. I'm going to go slow because I talk fast. I'd call your favorite client and I'd, I'd identify 20 of them. Okay. So you got to identify 20 
but you only hand select 10. Okay. And personally, I would choose the following clients. There's a guy in the back row behind Chris. He's looking at me like this, like I'm boring. Sorry, buddy. I'll try to get a little more energy for you. Okay. So get, get your top 20 people. Here's your conversation. I'm going to say, John, John, I just got done learning about a, a learning a real estate investing class and I would like to teach it to you. Just went through an exercise by with only $70,000 down. If you bought a property in today's market, it will be worth $900,000. Like to learn more how we can help you do that. I'm going to say it one more time. Ready? Hi, John. I just got, I just learned a real estate investing class. I got the idea that I would like to teach this class with 10 of my favorite clients and thought of you. We were just shown an example in our market today that if you bought a property for $350,000 based on what the appreciation's been the last 10 years, it will be worth $900,000. Are you interested to come to the class? Shazam, do you think you feel comfortable making that phone call? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, sure. I saw that. She hesitated. She's like, uh, yeah. All right, cool. Okay, here's my second follow-up, okay? Now, if you think about this, they say, I don't have the money. You guys want to write this down? I don't have the money. And I'd say, John, I thought you would say that. What if we reviewed the current value of your home and see what we can do to reposition your equity to accelerate financial freedom. All right. They just said, I don't have the money. Now remember, Shazam, you're only picking clients that you already have relationships with that you've done deals. Does that make sense? So you're not teaching this class to a, uh, someone who doesn't own a house. You're choosing your favorite clients that you've already done real estate deals with. Does that make sense, Susan? And everyone else in there? So I don't have the money. So here's your evaluation. I thought you would say that. What if we reviewed what the value is of your current home and then we could talk about repositioning your equity by another property that could be potentially worth $900,000 in the future? Raise your hand if you guys like this script. Got like five people. All right, we got the Braves guy. He's up late last night. Go Braves, okay? So here's what we're doing with this as we're identifying there's three outcomes that I want you guys to do. So let me see, based on virtually. We got 39 people virtually. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Cool. We got 70, we got 71 people on here. Okay. This is great. So of the 71 people, you guys know the 80-20 rule? Raise your hand if you know the 80-20 rule. Raise your hand high. All right. 20% of you guys are likely going to do this, okay? Now, because you guys are overzealous Chris Haynes friends, I'm going to say 50% of you guys are going to do this. So here's a cool example, right, Chris Haynes? Overzealous Chris Haynes friends. So ideally, by the end of the first quarter, if half of you guys do this, so 35 people, and then you guys get 10 people to show up to a meeting, collectively in your market, you will have influenced 350 families. Would you guys agree that's positive? Round of applause. That's good, right? 350,000. That's good. It's good. Do any of you guys realtors already do this currently? Raise your hand. If you're teaching real estate investing classes currently, not one person, virtually, Donna Goff is. Nope, not Donna Goff. Aaron Payne is. Okay, cool. Good. So, Here's what we want to do to take this into action. So action item number one is learn how to use a financial calculator. You guys have that written down? Brian Wenzel, can you please type in the Zoom chat bar the best financial calculator that you can use on your phone, okay? So when you guys are way better than the Utah realtors, and I didn't invite any Utah realtors, I couldn't get past the first part because they just didn't know what to do, okay? So here's what we're doing. Number two, you're grabbing a financial calculator. Number two, you're going through your own portfolio in the month of November. So, Brian, if you can type the link for Easy Calculators, please, then Chris's team will get the exact link, and then Chris's team can distribute it to everyone. 
You guys like that? Raise your hand if you guys would like a calculator on your phone that you could use. Okay, good. Every, you guys need to use it, okay? So number two, we're going to just analyze the properties. So we just analyze the properties, right? So the property is the property is evaluating the value, looking at what the principal balance is, looking at what the mortgage rate is, looking at what the rents are, and then depreciation, okay? So let's talk about selling the properties. Um, raise your hand if any of you guys have sold a property and not done a 1031 exchange on a rental. Raise your hand real quick. Has anyone sold a property? Okay, the gentleman in the middle that has a nice jacket, you guys dress really well. What's your name, sir? Sorry. Sorry. Okay, cool, thank you. Do you mind telling or sharing how much you sold the property for that you did not do a 1031 exchange? 335,000. 335,000, awesome. <laughs> do you remember how much you bought the property? I'm, I'm writing notes just like you guys are. Do you remember how much you bought the property for to the best of your ability? 135,000. $135,000, okay, you guys, ready? We're gonna do a quick exercise. This is what Shazam, this is what you teach at the free class, okay? You're gonna do a case study. So you bought the property for $135,000. What year did you buy that property, please, for $135,000? 2015. Holy cow, that's it? Dude, it's gone up 150% in six years. <laughs> did you wish you bought a couple more? <laughs> yeah, right. Everyone wishes we, we all wish we bought a couple more. Okay. So in 2015, this is a great case study. I'm writing this down with you guys too. So I want you guys to do the whole work right with me. So for you had a $200,000 increase in value. Brian, can you type in the Zoom chat bar? How much did his values go up in six years for in the last, uh, that went up $200,000. So here's what you guys are going to do. So you're going to show what you're doing, or if you haven't done it personally, my opinion is teach the class with a mortgage professional that can run the numbers with you. So what I would do, Shazam, is you fill the room with 10 people. You guys want to write this down? Here's what you do. Your job is to get the room with 10 people. Your job is then to show them three case studies. Here's the following three case studies. Case study number one, buying an entry-level three-bedroom, two-bath house in your area. That's case study number one. You're then going to give them some projections in 10 years how much that rent will go, how much the rent will go up and the values will go up. Here's case study number two. You're going to show them a fourplex, okay? So you're going to share the, a single-family residency, then you're going to sell share a fourplex, Okay. So you're gonna show how much fourplexes are going for in your market, and then you're gonna show them what it would be in 10 years. Now here's where it's amazing. Case study number three, you're gonna show them the difference by buying a single family residency. It goes up in value for 10 years. You sell the single family residency, then you do a 1031 exchange, and then you buy a fourplex. Do you guys see how that makes sense? What you're doing is you're building the journey of the investor for your clients. What I'm doing for you also is I'm building the journey for you as real estate professionals so you can build a real estate portfolio to replace your real estate career. Clint, am I, I still got you in the back? Yeah. Yep, all right. Hey Chris, who's better at basketball, you or Clint? Oh, totally me. 100%. You're quick. <laughs> Who's the better? Like probably Clint. He was better than me. <laughs> right. Who's the better hunter? That would be me. All right. <laughs> All right, cool. So think about this. You guys, if you're learning, raise your hand. Learning, raise your hand. I'm only getting half you guys. All right, a little bit. All right. Doing my best I can based on what we got. You guys do live in Tennessee. <laughs> All right, that's a joke. Okay, you can do that in Tennessee. All right. Okay, so here's what action item number one, right? So you guys all have a goal by the end of the first quarter 
to get 10 people to a class. You have plenty of time. Action item number two, you're going to share three case studies. You're going to teach this for one hour. I'm going to share the framework how to teach it. The first 20 minutes, you're going to go over scenario number one. You guys want to write this down? I'm literally sharing this framework so how you can teach these classes. Because as here's what's cool. You will, if you teach these classes every quarter, it's going to do the following three things. One, you're going to be really uncomfortable, which is a good thing. Number two, you're providing a lot more value to other clients than most realtors do. Would you guys agree with this? If you yes. actually teach this once a quarter for only 10 of your favorite clients. Number three, you're going to start generating leads because you're going to ask your clients to invite guests. Here's the qualification of a guest. They have to already, you guys want to write this down? They must already own a home. Okay, qualification, they must already own a home. Number two, they're, are, they're interested in real estate investing. Number two, they're interested in real estate investing. Number three, they're open to work with a new realtor. So what I'm doing for you guys is I'm establishing how you can get more leads yourself by teaching small intimate classes. By second quarter, you're going to build it from 10 clients to 20 clients because you're going to invite 10 people and then you're going to have them bring just one person. Okay. Now, number three, we just saw based on the appreciation, your ROI with the gentleman with the jacket. I apologize. I forgot his name with the glasses. His ROI was 148% in the last five years, which is a 16.36 compounded annually. That's freaking amazing, right? Now, here's the question that I asked originally. How much did you pay in tax when you sold the property and didn't do a 1031 exchange to the best of your ability, please? Do you remember by chance? I haven't paid it yet. <laughs> <laughs> Chris, he might need a loan to pay the taxes. All right, let's do some assumptions. You guys okay with this? Let's do some assumptions. Okay, we got 11 more minutes left. Chris, we good? You having fun, Chris? Yes. As long as Chris is entertained, that's all I really care about. You get Clint in the back. Okay, so let's do some assumptions for you guys because you need to know this for your clients, okay? What is the long-term capital rates? You guys want to write this down? What are the long-term capital rates? Long-term capital rates are going to be based on your adjusted gross income. Here's what I would say if I were you guys. Let's look at actually, I would actually pull it up in your presentation. Based on the IRS publication X, here's what 2021 long-term capital gates are. Sorry, long-term capital gains. You should consult your accountant though to see where you fall in line. That's how you protect yourself. Does that make sense? So our friend that just sold the property, if he bought the property for $135,000, so let's, let's do a quick assessment. You guys ready for this? Chris, I'm going to use you as a guinea pig. Is that okay? Sure. Okay, cool. So let's call the land value $35,000. You guys all write this down, please. Land value is $35,000. I'm doing this with you. So that means his depreciation over 27 and a half years is $100,000. Chris, every year, how much does this property depreciate at 27.5%, please? Um, I'm doing it in my head. It's a little bit over three grand. I, 36, 30, 36. It's $3,636, okay? So we're gonna take $3,636 times, you owed the property six years, is that correct, sir? 2000. 15 to 2021. Okay, cool. So I'm grabbing the calculator too, just like all of you guys in there. Joe, Joe Clary, I'd love for you to do the math. Sherry Cunningham, I love your kitchen cabinets. They're perfectly right over your head, Sherry. Okay, cool. So $3,636 times six. What do you guys have? $3,636 times six. I got 21,800. Type in the Zoom chat bar. Yep, 21,800. That's what I got too. 21,800. Now we're gonna take his sales price of $335,000. Do you guys uh, in, your sell, in your market, are the buyers paying their own closing costs or are the sellers financing the closing costs for the buyers? Which buyers. one? Buyers. Buyers. buyers are paying their own costs. Okay, cool. So um, when you sold your property, sir, for $335,000, 
did you make a real estate commission to your brokerage or are you going to just pay it all in your taxes? No, I made a real estate commission. Okay, you made a real estate commission. Okay, cool. So is it a fair assumption if you're not having seller, you're not paying for buyer's closing costs on the sell, you, let's take uh, 7% off the top. Seven, 3% for buyer's agent, right? 3% for seller's agent. And is title fees normally 1% of the sales price in your guys' market? Is that fair? Yep. Okay, cool. Good. All right, good. So I'm glad that Utah's similar to Tennessee. You guys are just more entertaining. Thank you. So in so now we have $311,000, okay? Now the difference of the land value, here's where it gets really good. If you guys remember... He bought the property for $135,000, took $35,000 off the land value. I want you guys to write this down again because this is what you can easily teach to your clients. All you need to know is a little bit more than them, okay? All you need to know is a little bit more than them, which you guys know a lot more than them. And then we identified 36,000, 36, or sorry, 3,636 times six. Twenty-one thousand and some change. Okay, what do you guys think his taxable amount is? I gave you guys all the formulas. Show what he bought the property for. He showed what the depreciation is over six years. We're going to add the land value back in. We have his net proceeds from the sell. And then we have what he's going to get taxed on. One fifty-four. 154. Does anyone else have that number? Chris, is Robin in here? Robin is in here. Yes. Oh, yeah, here. Robin at. Where are you at, Robin? I can only see your fingers. <laughs> I'm managing the. Oh, you're managing it. All right. That's cool. You're totally doing it. All right. Good. So we removed his cost and fees. Okay, we're going to wrap up in a few minutes. I want to end with this. Let's go through this case study, right? So let's go back. Really, really important. As, as Keith, has anyone seen Keith Cunningham before? Keith Cunningham, raise your hand. One person. Okay, I'm going to give a couple book suggestions. Keith Cunningham, has anyone read Rich Dad, Poor Dad? Rich, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, raise your hand. Okay, if you guys have not read Rich Dad, Poor Dad, I would encourage you guys to read that by the end of the year. Book number one anyone read Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill? Raise your hand high. Raise your hand high. Okay, if you guys haven't read that book, that's my second book. I would say, you guys write this down. Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. Okay. Here's the next one. The Road Less Stupid. The Road <laughs> Less Stupid by Keith. Yeah, it's a good one. Huh? He's from Texas. The Road Less Stupid from Keith Cunningham. So The Road Less Stupid talks about we're going to get better by asking better questions. We're going to get better by asking better questions. And as we ask better questions, we get better outcomes, right? You guys want to write that down? As we ask better questions, we get better outcomes. So the question for you is, is what is the taxable amount? I'm going to share this one more time. So we have a sales price, Brian Wenzel. If you can type this in the Zoom chat, that'd be awesome. So the sales price is $335,000. We're going to take 7% off the top because he did not have, he did not pay for the buyer's closing costs. So that gets him down to 311,550. We then took his purchase price of 135,000. We Extracted the land value of thirty-five thousand. That gave him one hundred thousand dollars that he depreciated over twenty-seven and a half years. The amount per year is three thousand six hundred thirty-six dollars times six. Then we take three thousand six hundred thirty-six dollars. Times six equals, we'll call it $22,000. Subtract the $22,000 minus the $100,000 because that's what his asset is before depreciation. 
equals $78,000. My friend with the backwards hat, you got it? You got me? You then add the $30,000 in land value gets me $108,000. I don't expect all of you guys to get this today, but what I do expect, sorry, I should trade my expectations for appreciation. I will appreciate that Chris could teach this after with you guys, right? This is the importance of working with a high level mortgage planning team that all of my realtors here in Utah, before they sell their properties, I'm analyzing their portfolio with them because ideally we want to help them get their long-term goals that we'll tie back into, okay? The difference of that has a taxable amount. So the taxable amount is how much Sir, who just sold his property for $335,000. You figure that out? I just helped you out. Okay, what's the amount, please? 111000 111,000. Okay. Guys, round of applause for everyone participating. Round of applause. Virtually, Elena, Dave, Sherry, Joe, Clary. All right, cool. Okay, here's what we took away from this. Now, we're going to help establish your guys' long term goal form. So, um, Chris, can you grab your form, please? No. All right, cool. So what I want everyone to do in the bottom left-hand corner, if these were color coordinated, the bottom left-hand corner, cor sorry, the bottom of the, the document has three little circles. Do you guys see the three little circles? It says, what is your total assets today? Do you guys see that? Mr. Atlanta Braves hat guy. What's your name, sir? David. David, nice to meet you, David. Sick game last night, right? Braves one, four, two. Okay, so David, I want you to write down, I want you to write down the bottom amount. What do you have in total assets, please? Okay, write that down in your form. Susan, my new best friend, Shazam, the second form talks about your ROI or age. Sh Susan or Shazam, the next bu bu bucket says which one? I don't know what page you're on. ROI, it's for you. Oh, okay. ROI. ROI. Good. I want you guys to write down, what are you currently earning in your ROI today? If you don't know, put IDK. If you, ha don't, if you think you're earning zero, write down zero. What we're doing is we're helping you guys establish your returns so that as you establish your returns, you can build financial freedom in the future. Does that make sense? You can't measure what you don't track. If you don't know what your numbers are now, how the hell are you going to know what they are in the future, right? So you got to know what your numbers are now, okay? Here's the next part. Age, write how young you are now. So Neapolitan, I think you're 35. Is that right, Neapolitan in the front row? It's ignoring me. Neapolitan. What's your name, Neapolitan? Don. Don or Sean? Don, D. Don. Don, all right. Don is a D. I love it. We should call you Mrs. Neapolitan. All right, so Don, then you're going to write down your age. Now we're going to reverse engineer this real quick, okay? I want to do long-term planning. So we have what you have now, and I'm going to pick Elena because she's a Keller Williams agent because I can tell of all that red. Okay, Elena, what I want you to do is pick the next form. You're going to type the top right. What do you want your assets to be in the future? Elena, what do you want your assets to be in the future? unmute yourself so you're excited so do you mean just like gross just gross assets com combining all rentals yeah, gross assets. you got it you got it good job gross we're just focusing on gross assets assets could be here's top five you guys write this down real estate's number one not not necessarily in the order real estate stocks bonds hard money and we'll call it crypto. How's that? Those are five things I'm in. Real estate, stocks, bonds, hard money lending, and crypto. Now, I'm not saying those are the five that you have to do. I'm just giving you five examples, okay? So, Elena, yeah, hopefully I said your name correctly. What is the total yes. asset you want in the future? Can we say like three million? Great. Well, whatever you say is important. Awesome. 
Okay, we're going to pick Orlando Coach. Orlando Coach, what is the ROI you want to earn when you're financially free? Orlando Coach, what is the ROI you want to earn when you are financially free? You hear me? Get on mute yourself, please. All right. He must be having technical difficulties. Destiny Erickson. I want all of you guys to participate with this. Destiny Erickson, what is the ROI hi. that you want to – hi. What is the ROI that you would like to earn in the future, please? Well, um, I think I'll refer to the road less stupid, and I should ask you. <laughs> great. Great question. You're very smart. Okay, Thank so you. here's my comment. You're welcome. I like your hair. So here's okay. what I would do. <laughs> you have amazing hair together. Hold on. Yeah, that was for oh, Chris. Right. All right, cool. <laughs> good. My goal is just to get the guy in the second row to smile at me, so I'm just working really, really hard. So you that's all right. There we go. We got, we, got, we got a little smile. We got a little smile there. Okay, so here's my suggestion. As real estate, uh, Chris, I got six more minutes. Are you okay with that? Yeah, go ahead. If you guys are okay with that, raise your hand. I, I want to be very conscientious of your time. Okay, I changed what I was doing. I'm missing my corporate branch manager meeting once a month right now, and I would way rather teach with you guys than listen about our branch manager meeting as a corporate company. So thank you very much, okay? So, so there's a gentleman named Peter Fortunato. If you guys want to write him down, he's in Tampa, St. Pete. He's a quick flight from you. Peter Fortunato. Brian Wenzel, if you don't mind typing this in the Zoom chat bar. If for those of you guys that want to get more interested in real estate investing, he teaches a couple classes a year live. I would, uh, Chris, I would totally go if I were you because he's a quick flight. Peter Fortunato, he talks about the life cycle of a real estate investor. He says, the first 10 years as a real estate investor, you're considered a starter. You're all over the place, okay? You want to do syndications, buy and holds, rentals, commercials, wholesaling, land, land uh, apartments, mobile homes, okay? After 10 years, then you go to years 11 through 30, considered a builder. There's two revenue streams, Destiny. He says you either, you're going to get revenue from rental properties, both residential and commercial, or Destiny, you would get rent income from lending money or notes, okay? So two revenue streams, rental properties, either real estate or either residential or commercial or lending money, Okay. Now think about this. Once you've been investing 30 years, I call them silverbacks. Silverbacks is gray hair. They've experienced life. Some of you guys look like you have some silver hair and you're in your 40s. So that's just called life experiences, right? But if you think about it, silverbacks have already been investing 30 years, okay? So 30 years, they have two concerns. They're considered an ender. And guys, as real estate agents, this is who you want to buy properties from. Please write this down. You want to buy properties from enders ages 60 to 75 that want to get installed. They want to installment sell, but they don't want to be landlords any longer. So you can buy the properties with seller financing because they still want monthly cash flow. They don't want the headaches of maintenance and management. Does that make sense? So would you guys agree that your parents in your 60s or 70s, their prioritization was a lot different than their 30s or 40s, right? You guys agree with that? So destiny, a good return when you're an ender, I would say is between five and 8%. Okay. So I gave you a long story of how I came up with that. Okay. Long Thank story you. with how I came up with that. Welcome. Okay. Last part is your age in the future. So there's a guy named Dan Sullivan from strategic coach. Has anyone ever heard of Dan Sullivan? Not one person. Okay. If you guys make over a quarter million dollars a year adjusted gross income, I'd write this down. This would be a good goal to get to. There's a coaching program called Strategic Coach. You have to make a quarter million dollars a year adjusted gross income. The way they vet you is you actually have to show them your tax returns. What they do is they talk about how to create a self-sustaining business. So I plan on working the rest of my life until I'm here, this mortal life, like legit. But if I'm enjoying what I'm doing, I never want to retire. Does that make sense? 
And that's when you guys get really fulfilled in life is if you can do what you love all the time, you not, might not be doing open houses on the weekends, but you might have a large port real estate portfolio. Then you can teach classes and serve other people. Strategic coach says that when you are truly financially free, you can still run a self-sustaining business. Would you guys agree with that? A self-sustaining business. You can pass legacy wealth to others. You can pass legacy wealth to others. So what I'd like you guys to do is write in the future, when do you want that financial freedom? So you're going to write in the future what you're going to do with that financial freedom. Here's what we did. We just established an action plan. We established where you are now. You guys agree? We established where you guys are now. We established where you want to go in the future, right? We just literally wrote that out. We gave you guys an action item that everyone should be in here teaching a class by the end of the first quarter with their top 10 clients to teach a free real estate investing class. I just gave you the framework of the three topics, right? I showed how to buy a single family residency. I showed how to buy a duplex or sorry, a fourplex. And then you'd want to do a 1031 exchange of how you sell that property and you buy a higher cash flowing property. So what I love for the people that are on this call and we'll wrap up the 37 people that are remotely, please type in your top takeaway for all of you guys that are there with Chris. I appreciate your time. I want you to write at the bottom of the sheet of paper. What is your top takeaway that you're going to do in the next week? What is the top takeaway that you're going to do in the next week? So let it be quiet for one minute. What is the top takeaway you're going to do in the next week? What is the top takeaway that you're going to do in the next week? Awesome. Fully understand the ROI and what my current assets are and what I can do to increase them. So many, but calling clients now that I know what I want to grow their investment portfolio, have their homes increase, teach, teach a class ASAP. Michael, review my current rentals. David, identify 20 people for the class. Gina, evaluate assets. Elena, listen to the road less stupid. Danny Sullivan, reach out to Silver Hairs <laughs> to know to gain more understanding. We should call them Silverbacks, Danny. Silverbacks, like a big monkey, right? Silverback. Joe Farella, read Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Eliana, learn about 1031 exchanges. Donna, buy Keith Cunningham's book. Read it, identify better numbers for ROI. Sherry, read the three books on investments. Brent, Brittany, evaluate my current assets. Awesome. Here's what I'd like, here's my gift for you guys I'd love for you to do. Um, I want to, I want, if you guys thought this was beneficial, please do give a round of applause or do something or do nothing. Awesome. Thank you. Um, thank you. Last year, my mom passed away on my birthday, August 2nd. Okay. And she didn't pass away from COVID. She passed away of just her, her pain, her physical pain exceeded her will to live. And she could have chosen to still live, but she would need a pacemaker. And she did not want to be in the ICU for two weeks without being able to see her family. And watching her make the decision in 90 minutes of the pain exceeds what I can do and I don't want to be myself by myself. She literally passed away in 90 minutes at the, at the ER. And my two sisters, my dad and I, they broke COVID compliance and they allowed all of us in the, in the ER to watch her pass away. And um, why I'm sharing this with you guys today is Success without fulfillment is the ultimate failure. Tony Robbins says that, okay? And what I've done since last August of 2020 is spending more time with my kids um, and being more impactful with others that I meet. And I have this like uh, mission or inspiration that there's a lot of real estate professionals that need help, that you guys have amazing tools 
and you can help so many people. You just need help to learn how to invest because there's a lot of realtors in my market that have been realtors since I've been born, 1978, that will come to my classes and they're trying to catch up. And they're very successful. They've made a ton of money, but they didn't buy any real estate and hold on to them. And my hope for you with Chris and his team is I just typed in the Zoom chat bar, my, my real estate consulting website. I want to help more realtors nationally learn to invest. So of the 78 people in here, maybe 20% of you guys I can help right now because you have the money, you have the interest, and you want to do that. But like I teach these classes every single week here in Utah, and it's crazy. I get tons of people excited, and they all write down notes, but their follow through is really low. And I'm saying with the 80-20 rule, I'm going to give you guys all the benefit of the doubt. Please work with Chris. Review your portfolio. Start studying some books. You guys can jump on my website. You can watch a bunch of free classes. I've been on some more podcasts nationally. But what I want to do is just help more real estate professionals learn to invest. Because as you guys understand how to invest, then you can teach your clients to. Would you guys agree? So as you guys are doing it yourself, you can teach your clients. So I look forward to having to hear in your guys' success with what's happening. And if I can, um, I'll share some information to Chris's and T after this class, but I appreciate all of you guys. And I know that it's not all about the money, but it's all about the connection. So I appreciate this. I'm going to type it in the Zoom chat bar one more time. And thank you very much, guys. Thank, thank you Matt. for your time. Thank you. <clears throat> thank you so much. I have one quick question on the goals. Can you either share really quickly with us? Uh, so it says, how much assets do you want for retirement? There's one, two, three. I didn't get those that, that filled out. Can you either share that really quickly so we can yeah. fill that sheet out? Uh, so if you go to the right of the form, it, you're going to do one, two, three. So you're going to do your, your total assets. So we're going to pick Elena. Elena. So if I remember, Elena said, she said $3 million, if I remember correctly, right? And then, so she wrote, so what you guys are on the right, you're going to write down your long-term goals. And then you're going to establish an ROI. So if I remember, Destiny asked me the question, Matt's an R what's the ROI you suggest? So I said between 5 and 8%. So let's put 6%, okay? But I'm not telling you guys you need to go for 6. You need to go with what you want to shoot for, okay? So you're going to write your total assets. Then you're going to write an ROI. And then you grab your calculator, like right now. You take your assets times that ROI, and that will give you an annual income. So Chris, if you see that underneath, that will give you an annual yeah. income. And that's what you guys want to work towards in the future. And then the, the action items are what you need to do to make that. If you want $3 million in assets, you got to buy 10 rental properties. Got right? You got it. You got it. You got it. So great. Great example. So each action item, ideally, you would use three action items per year to measure your assets. You would do three action items per year to make sure you're earning that return. You would do three action items per year as you reevaluate your age or where you're at. So I like, Tony Robbins says three to five to thrive. Like I like people to take three action items that they're going to implement in the next ideally 30 days and take action. And um, so one thing I would suggest is I have these free classes online. You guys can watch them anytime you want. It's a great way for you to understand this better but I thought we should go over the nuts and the bolts. What, what do we want? Why do we want it? Then you guys can work through the how as you guys through, through, go through testing. Awesome. Thank you, Matt. Big round of applause for Matt. Thank you so much. Thanks, everyone. Hope you guys have an outstanding day and look forward to learning more about your successes and uh, happy holidays. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, guys. And everybody stay online. We're not shut down yet. I'll, I'll, I'll go over just a few more things real quick. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, Matt is light years ahead of me in, in investing, and I got a lot to learn from him. Uh, he's a personal friend of mine. So 10% appreciation, that's pretty aggressive, right? Mm -hmm. The numbers still work at 3%. Doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. If you get appreciation, you are going to do well when you hold on properties, okay? Now, it may not be you invest 70 and it turns into 900. Maybe it turns into 600. I'm good with that. I'm good with that, <laughs> right? Not bad. So who has clients who are like, man, I'm going to wait for the market to go down? I've had guys tell me that since 2016. <laughs> They're like, literally, they could have bought a house for 300 and it's now worth five or six. They missed out because I'm going to wait for that market to turn. The market will turn at some point, but it may go up 40, 50, 
before we get a 10% pullback, mm-hmm. right? If it goes up 60% and comes back 10, it's still 40% higher than it is today. I don't know when that's going to be. It'll be a world event that ha- happens, right? It'll be a COVID type thing that'll, that'll change the market. I'm going to give you three reasons when clients tell you, hey, I'm going to wait for the market to turn, that I believe the market's not turning anytime soon. Number one is supply and demand. If you heard Essel Charles speak, supply cannot keep up with demand. Demand is here. Builders go buy 200 acres. They got to go to zoning. What does he say? You got to pay the pay the guy under the table some cash. Yeah. It takes two years to get through zoning and planning. You put some roads in. It's two to three years before that first house hits the ground. Right? So everybody knows there's demand in Nashville. Why don't we increase it? We're just go buy, you know, why don't we go build 300 houses, man? Let's do it. You, you can't right now. Yeah. Right? It takes three years to do it. Well, so, well, they're right. So <laughs> the demand is high. The supply can't catch up. So that's the first reason that the houses aren't going anywhere. Number two, we're freaking Nashville. Facebook is coming. Oracle, is that the other big? Yeah, Oracle is coming. Uh, Amazon is right across, you know, right down the street. If you take that road right there, you'll see an Amazon building that's humongous, right? So people moving to Nashville is not slowing down. They're coming here. And number three, destination city. Number three, guys, is inflation. Who knows what, is in, what inflation is? Yep. Government prints money. It makes the money in your pocket worth less, right? It makes hard assets, which he talked about, Bitcoin, gold, houses, it goes up, it goes up in value. I'm going to give you something that blew my mind. I was at Tony Robbins event, and I heard this. A million dollars is a lot of money, right? We can't really think of numbers. A million, a billion, a trillion. Like, that's just a lot. So a million seconds ago was 12 days ago. Okay, yep. million seconds, 12 days. A billion seconds ago was 33 years. Like, okay, now I can put that in perspective. That's a billionaire and a millionaire. Billionaire's 12 days old, billionaire's 33 years old. Okay, a trillion seconds ago, 33,000 years. The government printed $8 trillion last year. They just printed that money. I've been there. It's coming into the market. It doesn't go straight to our, straight to our pockets, but it, it gets into the economy. It creates inflation. Got to the gas pump, right? I'm not just blaming Biden. He's part of it. But Trump did it too. COVID hit. They printed a bunch of money. So those three reasons, guys, supply and demand. We're in Nashville. So even if the, the rest of the country has some, you know, some, some tougher times in, in real estate, Nashville, I think, is going to sustain it pretty well. And then there's the, the inflation, right? They print all that money. It's going to create. Edsel talked about uh, 25%. They increased the money supply 25%. Doesn't happen in one year, but over the next few years, basically things are going to inflate by 25%, including home prices. Okay. So when, when, when clients ask you, like, hey, should I wait? My opinion, you shouldn't wait. You should buy now, right? Um, interest rates are good too, right? You buy now at an interest rate that's great. Even if home prices fall 10%, if the rate's four and a half or five, you're missing out. You're still going to pay more for that house on a monthly basis. So, uh, any questions before we wrap up? So we got a lot of value. I got a ton of value. I got three pages of notes. So uh, we have lunch downstairs for the guys that are they're here. If you guys want to come and join us for lunch, you can do that too. Uh, my little job. But uh, yes. The only thing I just wanted to add was I did spend about fifty thousand dollars on that house. It was never mentioned. Right. So you do have to take that into account. Like if you pay X and you put fifty thousand in improvements, that comes off your tax burden as well. Yeah, so uh, last thing, guys, that we need your help for, which I don't even have a copy of, but please put your name on it. We're going to do a drawing. What are we giving away? Uh, Free cruise? Uh, oh, Sister Wednesday. Okay. Free cruise is next time. Um, cool. So please turn in your We Need Your Help form. Thank you guys for coming out today. We truly appreciate it. Um, and we have lunch waiting for you downstairs.